Welcome to the SWBL podcast presented by 1356 Public House. And tonight my guest is former champion, Hall of Famer, founding father, Kevin Wetucker, manager and captain of the SWBL Expos. Kev, how you been, bud? Doing good. Ready for ready for the new season. Yeah, us too. Um, yeah, we're getting closer and closer, but you know, uh, just, I mean, when we're recording this, it's about a month away. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming on pretty fast and all the buzz is really starting to amp up here and keeping me busy doing the podcasts, but, um, it's a, it's a good time of the year as we look forward to Memorial day. So, um, tonight guys, we're going to be doing, uh, a lot of, uh, things that you've come to know with the the captain's interviews. Uh, we're going to talk about season 20. We're going to look at the roster, look at the schedule, the division, um, get some predictions in there and really just kind of get Kevin's opinion on um, his team and, and kind of what the season uh, is expecting um, to be for the Expos. And and then we'll also have some fun and ask some questions toward the end um, that are wiffle ball related, but also uh, just for Kevin's uh just for fun. So um, with all that said, let's just jump into it. Um, first, again, want to kind of recap season 20. Um, you guys ended up one and nine. Um, so uh, and ended up in last place. I know it wasn't the season that you wanted. Um, if you could kind of summarize season 20 and what you remember of it last year, like what, what are your thoughts about last year? I think we were disappointed in our overall finish. But, I mean, every year the Expos are just out there to have fun. And that's what we did last year. And that's what we're always going to do. So, you know, win or lose, we're, we're always just there to have fun, just like everybody else is too. So, Yeah. Yeah, and Shantytown is definitely a place you know that the camaraderie is going to be there, the fun, the, the uh, characters of the league are going to be present. Um and uh, if you get on first base during your game, you're also going to know that they're over there too. So um, it's always good to have the guys right there, um, right next to the field, just you know, interacting with everybody. And and that's what the Expos have been have come been, sorry, over the past few years, and what we really come to know about you. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be there chirping you at first base if you get on, yeah, no matter who you are. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So um, well, so let's look at the roster um, from last year. You know, yourself, Jimmy, who did come in uh, 20th in the top 21 countdown. Um, so probably, I don't know for sure, but I think it's probably his lowest rank. Um, I can't be positive about that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, now, he did have a pretty down year at the plate um, for him, uh, but he's always, you know, probably, if not the most terrifying, one of the most terrifying pitchers that people have to face. So that's always going to have him in the conversation as one of the top players in the league. Um, you've got Germer, Jeremy Worrell came in and, and became, you know, your solid number two, Eggerstrom, Evan Close, and Jack Light, who was a rookie last year, you added, and he got a little bit of playing time um, as he gets a little bit older and, and just kind of kind of dips his toe into getting some actual playing time in the league. Um, so kind of looking at that roster real quick, um, nothing's really changed from your core. Um, and really, you know, the only thing off season wise from that group that's come up is Jimmy's finger. How's Jimmy's finger? Uh, as far as I know, it's better. Um, we're definitely looking for a little bit more out of Jimmy from the plate this year, but, um, and I mean, the same goes for the rest of our team. That's always been one of our biggest struggles is batting, but Every year, I'm confident that our team's going to put it together. I feel like Germer comes on way better every year. Evans getting, you know, he's been in the league for like five years now. Like he's getting used to it. And like you mentioned, Jack Light, I, th I think he's just going to be like a shining star in the next, you know, few years in this league. So, yeah, we're looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think one, I think, you know, Germ is one of the more underrated players i he has had more clutch moments that i can remember than a lot of players and he's always come through um right. 
you know, Evan, like you had said, has been progressing and getting better and better. And Jimmy had a down year last year, but again, like his pitching keeps you in games. I mean, on your championship run, you guys were winning by one, two runs. So it wasn't like you were blowing a bunch of people out at the plate, but I mean, you guys get three or four runs on the board and it, and with Jimmy on the mound, it can hold. Um, He's that good. And, you know, Jeremy, Jeremy got a lot more innings on the mound and you can only expect him to try to progress and, and get better. He's got a pitching pedigree. Um, And, you know, if he gets more consistent at the plate too, he can be a big bat for you as well. Um, Now this year you've added Sam. I can lob, I can laub. I'm not quite sure how to say it. Um, Mm -hmm. Curious what his role is going to be for the team and, and kind of what you're expecting out of him. I told him from the beginning when we drafted him that he's going to be um, basically in there as our third pitcher. I mean, I know he's probably a better hitter than a lot of our team, but I just kind of told him, like, you know, I'm not going to take at-bats away from my team already, but if we're desperate and we need, like, a game winning situation or something like we can put him in, like we can work things out. But yeah, um, I think mostly we brought him in for, to have a third pitcher, which I think will definitely help in case Jimmy or Jeremy, you know, was struggling or something, but yeah, um, I think it'll definitely, you know, I, f- I feel like on the expos, it's kind of like the more the merrier, like we, mm-hmm. we would sign the entire league if we, if, if we could so yeah well that brings up a good point you guys have the largest roster this year with eight players yeah um, i don't know for sure but i'm pretty sure it's the largest roster ever of an each Probably. league um, <laughs> i think last year with seven guys um or the last couple of years with people teams having seven players probably was the record so eight being a large roster um you know how just kind of talk me through like what the plan is going in, how you're balancing that. You've already kind of mentioned Sam's role and playing time and what's expected there, but you know, what can we expect from, from playing time and, and lineup and that kind of stuff? I think it's going to be mostly the, you know, the regular lineup we normally have. Um, I know Eggerstrom comes in from out of town, so he'll miss, maybe like the game on Friday, he'll probably miss the game on Friday and he definitely won't be there for game two. Um, Evan is kind of up in the air. He's got a new uh, child at home. So he doesn't, he's not for sure where, when he's going to be available that weekend. So um, if we need, you know, to move pieces around to, to make our lineup complete, then we'll do that. Yeah. Well, having the depth will be, make that easier and you can play yeah. the hot hand and, you know, you've got guys that you can rely on and you've got, you know, even Jack getting him more experience and letting him take some more at bats can only help him for the future, but also now. And um, Sam, like you said, has, has a pedigree to be a hitter. So if you needed to throw him in the lineup for a game, you can, you can do that too. But with him being a pitcher, I'm curious, does that mean you're we're not going to see on the mound at all anymore? I mean, if there's a game that gets out of hand and I need to go in there, I can I can go in for a little bit. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's got I mean, it's got to happen at least once. It's yeah, it's, it's tradition. So um, well, look, let's let's jump into season 21 some more and let's look at the division. Um, you guys are in the Ketty and I Center division with the Yankees and the Marlins. Um, so when the division draw came out, when everything kind of lined up, what were your thoughts on your division? Now you guys are in the division again with the Yankees last year, you had them in the division as well. Um, so that's not uncommon. It's just adding the Marlins this year instead. So what do you think about your division? Yeah. I mean, every year I think our, you know, we're, we're, um, going to compete in our division. I'm not worried about the Yankees. I'm not really worried about the Marlins, even though they had a good year last year, but we can beat both those teams. Mm-hmm. You've seen it before, you know. Yeah, we're uh, we're there to compete, and um, I know we're really all excited for the game two this year yeah. because we're still trying to be undefeated in that. Even though they didn't put us in game one because we're undefeated in game one, but you know they had to try to find a loss for you somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, speaking of game two, let's talk a little bit about that. And I do want to just give a shout out to the guys from game one last year. Um, as horrible as it was to be on the <laughs> losing end of that play, it was an incredible play. Um, one of the best plays I've I've seen at the blur. Um, just all, from everybody, everybody had to play a part in that in that in that play, and um, it sucked to be the one to take a wicked pelt from Jimmy, but um, it was awesome. So shout out you guys, that was awesome. Game two, yeah, game two, you guys have the Orioles this year, um, so a little bit different than the traditional game one, but um, you guys really enjoy that early season game. Talk to me about just why you like it so much um, and kind of what you're expecting from that matchup with the Orioles. We just always try to go out there and, you know, get that first win, even if it's our only win. Um, that's all we really care about. Uh, and especially this year against the Orioles, I think it's – I know everybody on the Expos is fired up about it and yeah. they want that win because they – I wouldn't say a hatred, but there's a a grudge against the uh, the Orioles this year. Oh yeah, why is that? Uh, so I know Jimmy and Gerber hang out with Brett quite a bit because I live in Brentwood Forest, so yeah, they do a lot of smack talking uh, to Brett, and they like to talk talk bad about the front office too. So yeah, and then part of the reason is. John Light left the Expos to go start this new team. So, but we have his son though, who's going to be way better than he's ever been. So, yeah, yeah, you do have the uh, the mutual players there. I mean, obviously, Brett being on the Expos too, and and John being a big part of that franchise. Um, and yeah, yeah, the uh, the the fact that the Orioles have three front office members definitely can uh, cause some commotion i should say so um yeah well i know i i can't imagine that that many teams are going to be rooting against you in game two i think almost everybody's going to be pulling for you to take that one um and have the orioles come in zero and one to the season so um looking at the rest of the schedule um any thoughts kind of anything kind of stick out to you just about your your schedule uh overall again you you like last year, six of your games will be done by the end of Saturday. So a majority of your season will be in the books. Now that doesn't mean anything, you know, but um, as we've seen, like anybody can go on a run at the end of the season, but just thoughts on the the overall schedule and how it kind of shake shook out. I think we're, we're pretty happy with it other than we had an early game on Sunday and I know I just saw that we're playing uh you guys, which is always a, a fun game on the opening opening day game on Friday. So yeah. we always look forward to that. But yeah. Um yeah, I mean our schedule is what it is and we'll see what kind of state we're in when we when we go into those games. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of people um, you know, have been saying when they're looking at their rosters, a lot of captains, you know, it's getting to a point now in the league where there there aren't easy games anymore. There aren't gimmies. There aren't things where you walk in like, you know, we've got this game. Um, every game is competitive anymore. So it's it's you kind of look at the schedule just like, hey, that's just the way the schedule is. There's really nobody has a better schedule than anybody else. You have to play everybody anyway. But um, I think that just speaks volumes to the way the league has grown the players the way they've grown and then the way the man, the captains have managed the rosters. Yep. So um real quick before we get into some projection projections, um, which I guess this kind of is, but so the the power rankings for hitting pitching and fielding just came out. And um I'm curious where you think in the overall power rankings, where you'll land and then tell me where you think you should be. I mean, I've seen where we've landed in hitting, and I can't argue it, but I think this year we're going to be substantially better than we were last year. Obviously, we were 1-9 and last year. I think Jack is going to step it up this year. I think Jimmy and Jeremy and Gerber 
and Everton are going to produce a lot more than they did last year. And I think uh, our team is definitely, you know, up on the upswing and we're going to, we're going to make it competitive out there and score some runs this year. Yeah. So then with all of the, those specific rankings in mind, where do you think the team will land overall one through nine? Uh, I put us number. I put us number one. You put us number one. Yeah. Okay. Do you think the rest of the league will agree with you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, well, let's go ahead and do some project predictions. So, in your division, who are you picking to win the division? Expos. Expo. I mean, if you're picking you to be number one, you gotta go with yourself. Yeah. Then let's go with the other two divisions. I want you to pick the winner. Okay. So, in the Cardinal Blinds division, you've got the Twins, the White Sox, and the Rockies. Uh, not the twins. Okay, and then uh, the corner pub and grill division is the Orioles, the Astros, and the A's. I want to say the Orioles, but I kind of hope you guys beat them. But uh, I I guess I have to go with the Orioles. Sorry. Okay, no, it's <laughs> all right. Now pick your two wild card teams. So you've already got yourselves the Twins and the Orioles in it. Pick your other two. Uh, I'm hoping for you guys and the Rockies. Is that possible? Yeah, it is yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a big swing. Rockies and Expos coming from tier three up to tier one would be I'd love to see the I'd love to see the Rockies back in there because we're um I think next offseason we're probably pursuing some players from the Rockies and uh some other some other teams, but I think we got a good grasp on on Blake and maybe BK for next year. So nice. All right, that would we be might awesome. dissolve. We might dissolve that team, so we might have to add a new team. Man, and you guys bump up to ten players. You just keep breaking your own yeah record. Is what it is. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, well, let's jump into hard hitters. It's the uh, random random question section, um, and we'll just kind of rapid fire these. So starting starting off, what's the final record for the Expos? Um, eight and two. Eight and two. Who is the team MVP for season twenty one? Uh, Jack Light. Jack Light. What's your favorite movie? Um, Caddyshack. Nice. Who will lead the league in home runs in season 21? Probably Sam, because he does like every year. Bacula or Skibby? Skibby. Okay. Your favorite team to play against? Astros. Um, favorite place to get breakfast during the weekend? The Shack. Yeah. Who will lead the league in strikeouts as a hitter in season 21? Uh, I mean, if I got enough bats, I probably would, but I don't know that many people that strike out that much. There's a few. I'm not going to say the, anybody in the expo, so. Yeah, you got to think of somebody in like the team. leadoff or the second spot because they're going to get the most at bats. I don't know anybody else that strikes out that much. BK struck out a lot last year. Um, yeah, I'll get it to BK. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the official drink of the Expos? Um, I would say Bushlight Apple, but they stopped making that yeah. um, after last year. So probably just going to be like Bushlight. I okay. think this year. Boys night out for the team. What's on the agenda? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure Jimmy would want us to go like play some disc golf or something before it gets like dark outside since he's like sponsored now and stuff. Um, and I don't know. We'd probably take it pretty easy. Go to OB Clark's or something and just drink a bunch of beers and talk 
uh, talk bad about the front office. <laughs> All right, who wins the championship? Expos over the Orioles. Nice. And Sam's losing streak continues. Exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for uh, this captain interview. Real quick, I want to thank our sponsors, 1356 Public House and Ketting Ice Center for sponsoring the division uh, that the Expos are in. Um, stay tuned. We've got more captain interviews coming. We've got uh, a season preview close to the season, fantasy with a wall, power rankings. Um, all of that's still going to be coming. So we've got content leading you right up to the season so uh stay tuned like and subscribe tell a friend about us uh help us get the word out and until then we'll see you at memorial day any final thoughts kevin nope we're ready to get out there though all right let's go season 21